Hey guys, welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Mining channel. In today's video, we are going to install a Flux node on a VPS. If you do like the Flux content, please smash the like button and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a great deal. But let's jump into the content. Now, this is probably going to be one of the longer videos, so please use the timestamps at the bottom to fast forward to a specific section that you are interested in. But enough of that, let me jump on the computer and actually get started. Okay, so here we are on the computer. Now, before we get started and installing a Flux node on a VPS, I just wanted to talk about some of the other options, right? So there is options to obviously install it on a bare metal machine or a machine that you are running at home. And that's obviously the first priority and that's what you should be aiming for. Um, it's only really when you can't do that, that you should be at least looking or considering a VPS. And that's what we're going to do today, right? We're going to install it on a VPS. And the reason for that is because my internet connection here at home is not fast enough. So that is the main reason why I'm installing it on VPS. On top of that, soon there will be another option as part of the Project Titan initiative that allows you to stake without standing up your own hardware or going to a VPS, but straight from your Zelcore wallet. So hopefully soon it will actually be a lot easier. Okay, so what do we need to get started? The first thing is we will need the Zelcore wallet and I've got it installed on my desktop and ready to rock and roll. I would need some flux within that wallet. Um, you would need at least a thousand flux at this specific point in time. So I've got that ready to go. We will stake that and I'll show you guys specifically how to stake that. The third thing is we would need a VPS that meets the minimum requirements at least of Cumulus, which again I've got. Hopefully it passes the benchmark. I think it would. And the last thing is you would need PuTTY or some sort of software to SSH into the VPS server. Again, you don't necessarily or technically need PuTTY. You can use something else that comes installed on Windows. But in my case, I'm just going to use PuTTY because I quite like using it. Okay, so let's start with step number one. And at least what I consider step number one is within Zalcor staking my thousand flux. The reason why I want to start there is before we can actually start our node at the end of our installation, you would need to have a hundred confirmations on your staked flux. And generally, if you're unfamiliar with the flux blockchain, that would be about three hours and 20 minutes or a hundred blocks. And there is a block every two minutes. So it takes a lot of time. So the sooner you can actually do that, the better from an efficiency standpoint. Okay, so let's go into Zelcore. So let me just go to my desktop, open up Zelcore and then specify my username and password. You would need to specify your Zelle ID. And now I am within my Zelcore wallet. Now I'm just gonna move it slightly to the top. Now what you would see here is I've actually got a little bit more than a thousand flux. I've got 1015 and this is specifically in my mining wallet. So it's important to know which wallet are you staking from. I've seen this question on Discord a couple of times. Now, how do I get this thousand flux? There's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can obviously buy it and on an exchange and I've actually got two videos and I'll leave a link to the video description at the top, one from Binance and another one from KuCoin, which you can have a look in case you're interested or you can actually mine it and that's also what I do. But once you've got a thousand flux within a wallet, the next thing that you would need to do is actually stake it. And I see this question a lot on Discord where people don't know how to stake the coins. I think having a thousand in here automatically stakes it, which is not the case, right? So let me show you how to stake that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select my Flux wallet where I've actually got my thousand Flux here. I'm going to go to receive here on the left hand side and click on my address. And the reason for that is I want to send a thousand flux and exactly 1000 flux to the exact same address where it's in. And this will actually stake it now in my mining wallet. So once I've selected my address, I'm going to go send. It's going to ask me for my pin again, which I'm just going to verify. I'm going to put my exact same wallet. So I'm going to just paste my exact same wallet in there. And this is the tricky piece or the piece that a lot of people get wrong. I'm going to stake exactly 1000. You don't need to account for any transaction fees or anything like that. Just stake your 1000 and then specify send. It's going to ask you, are you sure? I'm going to say yes. And it should now confirm that specific flux, right? So you don't see anything really has changed here. So if I go back to info, 
it's still exactly the same nothing really has changed now to make sure that i have staked that thousand flux what i'm going to do is go to apps and go to flux nodes and what you would now see is automatically it will create a line item here and looking at the amount of flux that you've staked it will register a tier so in my case it because i've staked 1000 it would register a cumulus tier so this is how you would know that 1000 is now staked so that is the first step in the process what we're going to be doing later is we're going to wait for a hundred confirmations so at the moment there's zero and this will gradually tick up as we go through the rest of the installation process okay so now that we've staked our thousand flux we can continue with the installation now for that i'm going to go back to the run on flux web page and from here i'm going to select launch nodes and then the option that i want to select here is the first one here that flux node renting options now that would open up a google sheet that flux created around the different vps providers their specific products and the cost that they provide that would meet the specifications for the different tiers now you can see here currently we are going to do a cumulus node but you would see if you just go to numbers it would show you the different providers that would meet the specification now the option that i'm going to use today is not on the list but it's the only vps that i have that i can play with but you should be using the sheet around the vps providers i also have a video around the different vps providers that i've tested and sharing my experience so i'll leave a link in the video description and tag it at the top but uh, within that list or within that video um, i talk about net cups and host nodes and i really do like both of them host nodes is probably the easiest um, but net cups is also great so i would highly recommend both of these two specifically for cumulus okay so now that you know where to find the different vps options and what your options are and what they cost let's continue with the installation now for that i'm going to go back to the run on flux page and then keep on scrolling down where i was what's important here is just to look at the hardware requirements so just make sure when you are picking a vps provider that they meet the hardware requirements and for me or at least in my experience the two tricky specs are the ram and the ssd size so just watch out for those when you pick a vps provider i'm just going to keep on scrolling down and then here show you guys the different videos that flux has got available on hardware options so you can see there's a whole host of videos in case you're interested in setting up your own hardware or using bare metal to set up a flux node so i would highly recommend if you are going to do that just watch one of these videos it's really great now what i'm going to do is go to the official flux node setup guide and i'll use that as a reference but generally what i do is just these two steps here at the bottom but i'll quickly use this to show you guys where the setup guide is now for that i'm going to click on the flux node setup guide and now take you guys through it okay so now that we are in the installation guide or the official installation guide let's go through it to the step where we need to actually pick it up from now for that a lot of the steps in this guide we've already actually done which we don't need to do necessarily so i'm going to skip or at least talk through some of these as we scroll down so it talks about the hardware requirements which we've already talked about it talks about the roi again we've already done that buying flux on exchange again you should be looking at my video if you are interested in kucoin or binance um, and then it talks about transferring it from a full node that's not for us um, i just keep on scrolling down talks about now staking which we already did earlier so we don't need to do that um, and then if i keep on going down here it talks about if you had hardware requirements how to do your port forwarding again not for us with a vps so if you have a vps option you don't need to worry about this this is more if you're doing your own hardware so i'll keep scrolling down until i get to the step where we now need to go to so here at step number 13 is where we're going to kick off so it now talks about using a ssh software like putty again you can use your command prompt in windows in case you wanted it to but i'm just going to use putty exactly like it is here in the guide so we're going to start now with step number 13. now continuing with step number 13 and step number 13 is all about getting logged into your actual server from your vps provider and again the software that 
the flux guide is suggesting here is putty and i really do like putty you can use something else but i'm just going to use putty in this case i've already got it installed but in case you didn't you can just select the link here which would take you to the download page for putty and depending on the operating system and what you have you would select the download version so in my case i would select the 64-bit version here for windows um, which now would trigger a actual download of the software again it's a small piece of software so it's not not massive at all but you can go ahead and install that once that is installed we would go and open up the actual application so you can see i've got the application open now once putty is installed and open like what i have here your vps provider should have given you or mailed you a root user and a password specifically for that root user but more specifically an ip address and that's what we would need to log into that actual server that the vps provider has given us so we need an ip address a root user and a password for that user now what i've got is contabo mailed me that so i'm just going to use that now so i've got my ip address here again you can save it um, and it would be in your list here so you don't need to remember the ips and here you can see i've saved a couple here um, but in my case i'm just going to select load or open up and what would now happen is i would get a little warning message here saying this is the first time that i'm accessing this via ssh so i'm just going to say accept and it's going to ask me now for a login user and again the vps provider should have given you that so in my case i would go root which they've given me and specify the password that they have given me right so now you would see here it's successfully logged into the actual vps server now that i'm in the server what i'm going to do is go back to the installation guide and scroll a little bit down talks about your root credentials which we've specified and then there's a couple of optional steps to do some benchmarking which i'm not actually going to perform so it talks about downloading some stuff and having a look at the benchmarks if this is the first time maybe have a look at that just to make sure that the vps provider has given you something that actually works so maybe go and do that and again i've done this in the past but i'm just going to skip past that um, and what we now need to go and do is open up our multi toolbox and this is the main thing that we're going to use for the installation right now before we actually open up the multi toolbox and what we're going to do now is here with option number 17 is just make sure that we've got everything updated the way that it should be updated right so we should have curl installed and also apm so let's go ahead and do that now for that what i'm going to do is copy the script here and then go back to my server I'm just going to go here and then paste to paste inside putty um, you just right click and it would paste and here you can see what i'm doing here is now installing it and you can see it's probably already installed and then i'll do the second one here also so I'm, again just going to copy that right click it in here and hit enter and it would now go through the installation of that specific package so i'll give it a second okay so you can see it's now done okay so now that it's done with that we're going to continue with the installation and probably the most important thing is now executing the command or this bash command that would open up the multi toolbox so what i'm going to do is just copy this right and go back to my node here and put it in and hit enter so this should now open up the multi toolbox now what i'm also going to do is i don't need the installation guide anymore i know this um, off the back of my head i've done it so many times now that the basics are done we are in here i've got the multi toolbox i'm just going to minimize this and then move this to the middle so that we can work from here now Okay, so I'm just going to make the multi toolbox a little bit bigger so we can read nicely. Now, the options that we're going to select here is option one, and then eventually we are going to go to option number two. So, first off, let's start with option number one. So, what I'm going to do is just specify one in here and hit enter. That would now ask me to do or create a new user. So, it's important that you would remember this user because we're going to use a little bit later so for this i'm just going to say cumulus 
and then hit enter. It's going to ask you to set up a password for Cumulus. So I'm just going to set up that password and then I'm going to have to repeat it. So you would see now it what it's actually going to do is first upgrade or update all of the packages on your environment. So this will take a little bit of time depending on how old it is. It might take a little bit of time, but I'm just going to let it run until it's finished. Now, this is where you need to be patient. It might take a little bit of time depending on the hardware, but eventually you'll get the option that I'm getting here now where it's finished installing Docker and it's going to ask you, do you want to switch to that user? In my case, I'm going to say yes. Now you would see it's now switched to that user. What we're going to do next is execute the same command that we previously done to get back to the multi toolbox. Now that we've done installing Docker, what we need to do is actually install Flux, right? And that is option two. So that's what I'm going to select here. What you would see, it's going to ask you now, what is the password for Cumulus? Again, that's where, you know, it's important that you remember that password. So I'm just going to specify that in. And now it's actually going to start the installation. Again, this is where you need to be a little bit patient and just wait for all the options to, to come through. It takes a little bit of time, probably end to end, at least from this point of view, it's probably like 20 minutes or 15 minutes, depending on how fast your VPS provider is. I've seen some of mine taking 45 minutes and actually on the Raspberry Pi an hour. So it really depends on the actual hardware that's sitting behind it and what the internet connection I use. Okay, so now it's asking for some of my staking credentials from Zalcor. So you can see here, it's looking now for the identity key provided to you from Zalcor. So this is now where I'm going to go back to my Zalcor wallet. You can see here, and where do I find that identity key? For me, what I do is I just go apps and go back to flux nodes. And again, here is now where you would find what you have staked. And again, you wouldn't be able to find that identity key if you haven't staked so it's very important that you stake first so now if i open up this you can see i've already got 21 confirmations between ones we've staked and again that's specifically why i'm saying start with that first now for that i'm just going to go edit and this is the details that i'm going to need so there's a couple of things here the identity key the collateral transaction id and the output now how do i copy and paste that i'm just going to select the identity key you can see at the top it says it's now been pasted and if I go back and open up Putty, what again I'm going to do here, if I want to pay something, I'm just going to right click it. It would remember that credentials. I'm going to hit enter. And the next thing that it's going to ask me for is my Fluxnode collateral transaction ID. And for that, I'm, again, I'm going to go back to Zalcor, select my collateral transaction ID, go back to Putty, right click to paste it in. And then it's going to ask me for my output index. And I saw that was zero. So I'm just going to select zero and hit enter. Next up, it's going to ask me for my Zell ID. And where do I get this? Again, in Zellcore. So they actually show you the path, how to get there. So I'm just going to go there. So I'm just going to hit cancel here. Open up apps again. You can see the Zell ID option here. And then again, if I select either on this QR code or on that, it would copy the details. And then I would go back here, right click to paste it and hit OK. And now it will carry on with the installation. Again, this is where you just need to be a little bit patient. It might take a little bit of time, but let's just let it do its thing. Next, it will ask you where to get the bootstrap from. So you've got two options here. You can select your own source or you can say download from source. In my case, I'm just going to say download from source and hit OK. And what it's going to do now is download the bootstrap. So this again might take time depending on the internet connection. And you can see the ETA is four minutes. There's also unpacking step. So it might take a little bit longer. You can see after it's downloaded the bootstrap and unpacked it it installed a whole host of things that it needs 
but then it would get to this stage where it's starting with the daemon and syncing to the blockchain again you can see here it specifies that it can take up to five minutes again just sit down patiently make coffee do something else until you see another pop-up come up asking you for something specific okay so the next thing it's going to ask you for is alert notifications so i would highly recommend you to say yes here but to make this video a little bit shorter i'm just going to specify no what i also would suggest i've got a separate video of how to install the watchdog so i would highly encourage you to go and actually watch that so in this case i'm just going to specify no and then it's going to carry on with the installation so again i'm just going to let it do its thing for a little bit until i get to the next step yay it's done yeah, you can see the duration end to end 34 minutes to get it installed now what is important here is we need to quickly go and have a look and see if our benchmarks have passed because we can't really start the node for two reasons right so first off we need 100 confirmations and we need the benchmarks to pass so those are the two things that you would need to take into account before you actually start the flux node now first off let's go and have a look at the benchmarks now for that i'm just going to take my ip address here together with the port and go to my browser and copy and paste it in to check the benchmarks you can run commands straight in here in case you wanted to do that um, again I, I quite like the the look of dark mode in the flux os so that's why i like that but you could execute this here to check your benchmarks so this flux bench dash cli space get benchmarks should show you the benchmarks now for that i'm just going to go back to my web page here and then open up something new paste it in and hit enter now this would then open up the flux os so you can see here it says flux is updated now for the benchmarks to see what your benchmarks are i'm just going to go benchmarks control whoops flux nodes get benchmarks here and it actually shows me my benchmark so here you can see normally if something has failed it would specify here in red that it has failed so here you can see a look at my cumulus node that i've got on contabo so you can see this more than enough ram more than enough cpu cores the write speed is currently passing but that sometimes fails with contabo and that's a big issue with contabo so now this is what um, the benchmarks looks like now to start the node i need to get a hundred confirmations now for that i'm going to go back to zelcore and then specify my credentials again it's logged out all right and if i go back to my apps flux nodes and here you can see here's my node it's currently still saying offline obviously because i haven't started it so i just made sure now that i've passed the benchmark so that is not an issue now the last thing that i'm waiting for is just 100 confirmations now if i open up this you can see currently it's got 43 confirmations so i can't actually start it the button is also not available so i can't physically start it until i get 100 confirmations but what i can do while i'm here is i can just edit this and say contabo test and specify my ip address in here again i still have it copied from previously and then just hit save so this just changes the name and specifies the ip again if you've only got one it's probably not an issue but if you've got multiple it becomes a little bit of an issue now it's just a waiting game until i can actually start it now if you do fail your benchmarks it really depends now as i mentioned it would specify here at the bottom what failed specifically and it could be lots of different things that fail right so the typical suspects are the disk write speed here specifically in contabo space this would fail all the time um, it could be the cpu speed or it could be the internet connection or it could actually be this ssd size so that's something that happens every now and again with vps providers where you've actually had to buy a add-on storage so that add-on quantity might be on a separate partition but anyway the, the long and short of it is the it will tell you in here exactly what's wrong and then you would have to go ahead and fix it generally speaking if you're using a vps if it's the disk write speed or the eps score or which is the cpu performance if they fail you just have to go back to the vps provider to potentially help you fix that if it's the disk size that's a different story right that's a, a partitioning issue but in case you do get stuck what you can do is go to the discord community here specifically the flux discord 
there's a specific channel for problem solving, right? So you can just specify your issue in here and then there will be lots of people helping you to sort that out. Now, on top of that, there's also official support website where you can actually log a ticket and then somebody from the Flux team should get back to you on that. On top of that, I've recently joined the Sleep Money Club. It's basically a Discord community of like-minded individuals with lots of content in here. We have a Flux channel and also a mining chat. So in case you're interested to join, I'll leave a link in the video description. But coming back to the benchmarks, it will tell you here really exactly what is wrong. And then you just need to go about fixing that. Okay, so a lot of time has now passed. So let's quickly have a look if the confirmations is done and then we'll start the notes. So for that, I'm just gonna go into Zelcore here um, and then I'm gonna go into my apps, go to Flux nodes. And then I should still have the node here. It's still saying offline, obviously because we haven't started it. So if I just open it up here, you can see it's now got 225 confirmations. So it's actually a lot of time since I left it. And then you can also see now the start button is active. So we're just gonna select that. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna start? I'm gonna say yes, start it. And now it's going to start the node. So we'll give it a, a couple of minutes to start and then we're going to go back into Flux OS just to make sure it's been started. Okay, so after waiting a little bit, all that I'm just going to do is just refresh it here from my Flux nodes. And you can see the status was started and what I'm looking for is confirmed. So just give it a second. And here you can see now it is confirmed. So this should be what I need. Now, if I wanted to check when am I actually going to get paid, again, trying to make this video as short as possible, I have a, another video and I'll leave a link in the video description and tag it at the top. But generally speaking, it's currently around 12 days to get paid for a cumulus load. So it will be a long time until I get paid or till I get in front of the queue. Also, you know, you can see the same type of info on the Flux OS. So if I just go to control, whoop, not control, go to the daemon, and then go to flux node and get my node status here. You can see here is where I'm currently confirmed. So that's sort of why, where you would go to go and check that. That's it for this one, guys. If you've liked the video, please like it and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify in the comments what you would like me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.